Now, single father, I guess, you know, if, if, if you're not with your child, you have a daily responsibility for the welfare of that child. Daily. Man doesn't put his head on the pillow unless he's figured out what's going on with his family every day and what he's done to provide for that house every day and what he's done to cover that house spiritually every day. Well, they're with their mom over there in Texas. Well, it's your responsibility to make sure they're all right. Well, it's a lot of drama communicating. Well, then you take whatever door is opened, but you don't just try to avoid the drama and neglect that child. God will show you a way. God will show you a way. And if you'll handle yourself as a person of character, God will open the door for you. But a lot of times, it's like we talked about on Sunday, if you can't do all the way right, at least do as much right as you can. I told you my mom, she said, you know, we were dirt poor, got evicted out of the place. I couldn't pay the rent, but I could leave it clean. That's character. Well, <laughs> they're going to evict me, I just leave it as it is. No, so you couldn't pay the $1,500 rent that you owed but you could do as much right as you could. You might not be able to be in their lives and be at every game. It might be too much drama, but you can do what you can do. You can send that money. You can send those cards. You can send the support. You can do what you can do. Ah, you're not going to let me see them? Then fine. Then just let her have them. No, 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 no. You do as much right as you have under your power to do. So parents number two, you got to avoid a fear. you got to avoid guilt. That hand's already been played. You can't go back and change it. But if you're motivated by guilt, you're going to try to overcompensate and you might make a mistake. When you're motivated by guilt, you might get in a relationship with a man that you don't need to get into. Well, he needs a man in his life, not at the cost of your holiness and not at the cost of your Christian witness and not at the cost of your peace of mind and not at the cost of what you believe from the Word. Number three. Avoid the temptations of exhaustion. Exhaustion brings a vulnerability. It says, I'm tired and I need help. I read something one time where they equate a single mother to a person driving across country, makes it halfway, pulls over to a rest stop exhausted, I can't drive anymore. God comes along and says, well, that's where I'm going. Why don't you rest? I'll drive. And she's just so happy to have somebody driving. The problem is, they get a few states away, she's going to want to wake up and, and be involved. And he's just going to say, no, why don't you go back to sleep? I got this. Yeah, but I'm ready now. And, and, and it's too late. You've abdicated out of exhaustion. You don't need to do that. There's a lie that single parents get told that... that, that uh, uh, Anything's better than being alone. No. Alone is better than married and miserable. It's better than married and controlled. It's better than married with a fool who's not going anywhere. Alone is better. And your kids are going to be just fine. Listen, there's enough people out there with both mama and daddy that are fools. Do not make a man or uh, in your child's life the source. God is the source. Because ending up with a man with no God involved, that's, that's, you're going to do more damage. Say this next thing to single parents. Responsibility. You're going to have to play multiple roles, but you can do it. You can do it. Pastor, my son's getting into stuff. I don't know about this stuff and boys and stuff. I don't know what's going on here. What, I, don't, I don't know. I need somebody to do that. God will give you wisdom on it. Read books. Man, you got a daughter and man, something's happening to her. She's blossoming out. Things changing and going. I mean, I'm stuck, Pastor. I, I'm scared. <laughs> you know what? There's people. You got a sister. You got somebody in your in your in your church family? This is somebody that's been got all the answers. And you don't have to compromise who you are to get those answers. You don't have to bring Joe Thug around so somebody be around your son. And let me say this finally. 
let me say this. In a, I mean, I, we, we, we need to spend about a week on single parents, but let me say this. Don't neglect a woman or a man with kids as a possible marriage candidate. You're going to miss out on one of the best. Let me tell you something. You ever get in a place where a mama's raising a few kids by herself? You talk about a family. Man, they are they are together. They, they are a crew. She will have a relationship with those kids. And you don't have to come in and be dad. And you don't have to come in and do that. But boy, you can partner. And, and you can be those kids' hero. And you just have to admit right then, I am not your dad. But I will play as much of that role as you will allow me to play. Let me tell you something. My... my Stuart Smith, the elder here, when he was back in his worldly days and met my mom back in the early 80s, he said, oh, no, no kids. Uh, I don't know, no kids. And until he met me. I'm a little bit of a seven-year-old guy, and uh, I met him and talked to him for a few minutes, and I walked him to the door. I said, well, Stu, it's been nice knowing you. Have a nice life. <laughs> I sent him on his way. I said, well, it's been good. You can go on now. But I know so many guys listen to me that think that these, these women that have kids are, are damaged goods. Brother, you don't know. They're beautiful. They're awesome, man. They're strong. And, 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 and you're missing out on some good, man, to be a blessing. Well, I always want to have something of my own. Well, how about being faithful over that which belongs to another and allowing God to bring you harvest? But I know all these beautiful girls in our church, Holy Ghost girls. Just the real deal. Love God. No drama. No mess. And I talk to these, some of these young guys. Say, hey, have you ever talked to this person? Oh, Pastor, you know, I ain't got kids, man. You know, man, you, you, <laughs> you ignorant, man. You, as Michael Jackson would say, they're ignorant. Just ignorant. <laughs> well, you, you don't know what you're missing, man. You, please. Can you imagine if, if Stu had said, oh, man, I ain't miss that little kid. Where would I be? Brother, you, you might be missing out on gold. Uh, my dad, uh, dad, I think you were cooking in the kitchen or whatever, and I called you dad or whatever, cooking in the kitchen. They, they, they weren't even married. I said, well, dad, I'm going to go do this. And, and when this man who never wanted kids heard this little guy call him dad, and I think they asked me, I think my mom said, baby, you don't have to call him dad now. You know, that's, you know this and that. I said, well, I figured it'd make him feel good if I told him that. <laughs> And it did. <laughs> well, you're missing out on some great joy. Yeah. You're missing out on a powerful thing. It could be a real blessing to people. It could be a real blessing to people. Now, if you marry somebody with children, if you have children and you get married, remember, that's your husband or that's your wife. And even though you and the kids have known each other longer, they have to take a step down now because you're married to that man now. You're married to that woman. And one of the mistakes single women make is they build up in their minds, it's us against the world. Now look, it's, and your mama's got you and we got you in this us against the world. And no, we might have this, but we're going to stick together no matter what. And you, you bond emotionally on a level that's unnatural with those kids. And you get married and it's still us against the world and you're part of the world. <laughs> and it's, it's a protective thing. I'm not going to let them get hurt again but it's based in fear. And kids can smell that disloyalty. And if they pick up on it, they'll capitalize on it all the time. And it's not the stepfather or stepmother's responsibility to enforce the respect. It's the natural parent's responsibility. Your son says something to his stepdad. I ain't got to listen to you. Let me tell you something. Single mama... If that's your kid, and he says something like that, your 14-year-old son says, well, you're not my daddy. Single mama, you hop up over the couch. <laughs> you come back, flip over that kid, push his... Say, listen, so help me God, I will end you <laughs> if you disrespect him ever again. Don't put him in the position of being the bad guy. It's your responsibility to make that happen in that house. It's your job. Because you remember, you chose them. And, and as sad as it is, in that household, the spouses are first. Well, these are my kids. I'll I take care of them, and I'm never going to let them get hurt again. Well, then you might need to stay single.
Because when you stand on that altar, you're saying, kids, you were here. I'm moving you here now because my first loyalty is to this man or this woman that I'm marrying.